The Dollar General has offered to compensate its employees with four hours of pay upon completion of the coronavirus vaccine. And today, in this Bible study, I want us to talk about the effectiveness of temptation because there is a broader and truer thing in the midst of all of this. That's worth our discussion. So thank you for joining me. I'm Pastor J. Dylan Proctor. This is the Nazarene Stream Preacher. And today we're going to be having a short little conversation on the fact that the Dollar General has come to its employees all throughout America and said, we will offer you four hours of pay. And this is in order that they can show documentation that they've received the coronavirus vaccine. Now, this in and of itself would not be reasonable if you want people to take off work to go have a vaccine. You know, that's not something which is out there and really crazy. However, the reality around the vaccine is not the same as something like a polio vaccine. And we're in a moment right now where I can only describe truth in the world as melted chocolate that has been poured into a bunch of mud. There's been a whole massive mix-up between mud and chocolate, and you're told to sort out which is which. And the problem is, is that there's a lot of people who will go out there and say, oh, it's all mud. There's no chocolate at all. There'll be some who say, well, there's all chocolate. There is no mud. There's no such thing as mud, actually. And the world is in a position right now where our institutions, they are incapable or just outright unwilling to actually rise to the occasion of the responsibility of their duty to be honest with people. And so what that means is we as individuals, we are left in a very precarious position where we have to sort out what is good and true. And this means, of course, you need to be right with God. You need to have that spirit of the Holy, the Holy Spirit with you. And the Holy Spirit will give you some discernment, but you're going to have to, to also be somebody who's an active critical thinker. And that's one of the things that I want to do here at this program. Uh, the Nazarene Stream Preacher has helped give us some tools for critical thinking. And when we square our minds honestly around the fact that it's not cut and dry, it is like a bunch of melted chocolate poured into a big puddle of mud and people are left to sort it out. This vaccine, it is not just cut and dry. And ignoring the legitimate concerns that people have about the vaccine, that's not helping either. It's also very popular right now where people say, well, if you can just, you know, silence the dissent, if you can just, you know, take the concerns that people have and brand them as conspiracy theory and just cast them outside, you know, that'll make them go away. No, no, it won't. There's no lukewarm sanctuary. You're not helping by denying the legitimate concerns that people have. And it's so crazy. It's almost a, a wonderful gift that the public sphere, just a few months ago, a lot of skepticism about the, the vaccine and the mainstream storyline is completely correlated and a causal correlation between American politics and whether or not we, we like something or not. And that's just ridiculous. There is no truth in that. So what does this actually mean? What's the broader and truer perspective that we can learn about this? And this is where I want us to have a short little Bible study on temptation. Because one of the things which is really interesting to me is the fact that they're offering four hours pay here at Dollar General. And again, I don't know what's really going on at Dollar General. I can't answer for them. But I can look at the biblical truths and see how, how things are. Because what Dollar General is trying to do, and a lot of companies as well, is they're trying to incentivize people to get past the uncertainty. They're trying to just paint the narrative, we move forwards, this is the way, the truth, the life, and there's a lot of blasphemy right now with things claiming to be God. I don't use that language by accident. They, they'll, they'll throw this out there kind of like the beast comes up out of the sea and say, oh, it's just so normal. No one can compare it to it. Just take the four hours pay and move on. And what's fascinating to me about this is the size of what they're giving people in order to put away all the legitimate concerns. And again, I'm not here. I don't know. I have no idea what's going on really with the vaccine. And that's worse than just being able to say with certainty it is bad or with certainty that it is good. The fact that it is this hodgepodge of undiscernible truth is just so destructive. It's just absolutely destructive. That is worse than it being out in the open corrupt. We, we should take it as a gift when other people do what Twitter did the other day. And regarding the Uganda elections, they came out and said, you know, it's wrong for anyone to, to censor speech. It's wrong for you to do something which you know, breaks the, the idea of the open and free internet. Whenever someone actually admits they're, they're corrupt like that, which again, they're, they're admitting their blatant hypocrisy, 
They're blatant double standards. Um, take that as a gift because not always is that the case. A lot of times we are in this mud chocolate cocktail where you can't tell what is what. And there's two scriptures that I want us to look at. And again, I'm not ruling here on Dollar General, but I'm telling us there is no lukewarm sanctuary. You've got to sort out stuff in your own life and make your own decisions. And there are two biblical texts which came to my mind when I saw this. And it was the small pittance that they paid people in order to take this. You know, if they came along and said, oh, we're going to pay people a million dollars to take this vaccine, you know, a lot of people would be very suspicious of that. But whenever you get a temptation that comes to you that's actually small, that's just, here, go ahead and we're just going to give you, you know, easy numbers. We're going to give you $50 to take this. You know, $50 is $50. That's not a bad thing. You know, it's nice to have something you didn't have before. But at the same time, for the amount of uncertainty around this, legitimate uncertainty around this, um, not, not that big of an amount. So let's get over here. And I want us to look at Genesis chapter 25, verse 29 through 34. And the scripture reads, When Jacob had cooked a stew one day, Esau came in from the field and was exhausted. You know, we feel pretty exhausted right now. We're, we're sick of stuff. We're just, the whole world, very much exhausted. Well, what happens here, huh? When you're exhausted, be very wary. And I don't mean be wary of, of your weariness, but be wary of how easy it is to, to be deceived. It says, And Esau said to Jacob, he said, Please, let me have a mouthful of that red stuff there, for I am exhausted. You know, give me something to alleviate my problem. And in verse 31, Jacob said, But first, sell me your birthright. You know, that seems like a pretty high price to pay for something that you're getting small in return. You're, you're throwing away your ability to think for yourself, your ability to be free. The, the, the birthright we have as creatures made in the image of God is the, the free will we have, the ability to love, the ability to reason. There's a lot of things that we have by birthright from God. And the birthright that is being thrown away right here is just for a little bit of soup. Not even anything that's that exciting. And Jacob, he said, first swear to me, swear an oath right, or an oath to me. Nope, excuse me, I skipped a verse. Let me go back to verse 32. It says, Esau said, look, I am about to die. So of what use is the birthright to me? And this is a really important verse. I got to go back and get that one, right? Because a lot of times people say, I'm so exhausted. What, what use to me is the future if I can't survive the here and now? If, if my life is so miserable right now, why do I care about the liberty of the future, the truth of the future? Well, as the scripture unfolds, Jacob says, first, swear to me. Swear to me an oath. And? He sold his birthright to Jacob. And then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew. And he ate it and drank, and he got up and went on his way. And so Esau despised his birthright. And I do like how the NASB translate this. It says he despised his birthright. He, he rebelled against that which was innately his. And he didn't wake up that morning saying, Oh, yes, I hate my birthright. See, this is the thing. Truth it doesn't actually depend on what your opinion of the matter is. Despising, rebelling against your birthright doesn't mean you woke up in the morning deciding to do that. Wholehearted evil does that, but it's not a given. You can still do the half-hearted evil and find yourself separated from God on the road to, to hell all the same. And it, it really is just such a, a tragedy to see this sort of situation unfold. Because Esau, for, for nothing in return, he throws away 
something which is really good. The next scripture I want us to look at is out of Matthew chapter 26, and this is verses 15 through 16. And this is when Judas is betraying Jesus. And the disciples, they don't fully know who Jesus is, but they, they have a pretty decent working knowledge. There's quite a few people who have sorted out that Jesus is the Messiah. And not just the earthly sort of Messiah that is kind of popular to talk about, but there are a lot of people who have seen the miracles and said, hey, this guy is, you know, the son of David. Well, Judas has all that information too, but in these two verses, 15 and 16, Judas said, what are you willing to give me to betray him to you? And they said to him, 30 pieces of silver. And from then on, he looked for an opportunity to betray Jesus. And 30 pieces of silver. And yeah, 30 pieces of silver is a lot in the ancient world. It's a lot more than uh, it might just appear for, for somebody on a day-to-day -day basis. But in the grand scheme of things, in the grand treasury of the temple, that's not much. In the grand treasury of a nation, that's, that's not much. And when you put in the grand course of all creation to betray the master of creation, that is that is a, a pitiful penance. You know, there's the popular Charlie Daniels song, The Devil Went Down to Georgia, Looking for a Soul to Steal. And the, the wager made in that song is the fiddle made of gold for your soul. But in truth, the devil doesn't have to give you a temptation like that. No. Mm-mm. You know, we think about temptations being grand where people are, are told, you know, why don't you throw away your life for this, you know, endless supply of wanton harlots. But in truth, the devil doesn't have to do that. He can give you a, a pornographic image that's drawn with crayons crudely until you get to look at it once and throw away your future family and people will take it. The fact that it seems so small kind of makes people think, well, it can't be that serious. It can't be that big of a deal. I can't be really throwing away something of importance, can I? You know, the, the small temptation convinces our brains that there's not a lot of big things at stake. And my, oh my, what, what a destructive power that is. So that's going to be where we wrap up our Bible study today. Uh, actually, today I'm going to put out several different videos on several different topics, but I just wanted to look at this one. Again, I'm not ruling on Dollar General. I don't know. But I do know this, that you can really trick people into thinking something's not a big deal when it actually is by offering them something really small for it. Beware of the temptations that come to you offering you a small pittance. I know we tend to think of the devil coming there with that golden fiddle. You know, I'll, I'll promise you the whole world like he does with Jesus there in the wilderness. But as we see from scripture, the most effective temptations in getting people to throw away everything are sometimes very small. A bowl of soup, 30 pieces of silver. Throw away everything. All righty. Well, we'll wrap that up there. Thank you for joining me. I'm Pastor J. Dylan Proctor. This is the Nazarene Stream Preacher.